Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 15th and the 22nd of July. You know, many times that people ask me in the videos if I do this or if I do this, is this like a secret marking for some of the viewers? So yes, we have a secret society of astrologers worldwide and actually I'm giving codes while I'm scratching my ear or nose. No, I just have a sensitive skin. That's all. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about this week? Well, we have two squares, one opposition, and one conjunction. So we have the conjunction of the Sun to Mars. We have two squares. We have one square between Venus and Neptune, one square between Uranus and Mars, and another opposition between Venus and Saturn. So before we start to speak astrologists, Let's speak English a little bit. How does it feel? What does it create in our life? So, generally speaking, there's a lot of energy in the sky and the energy is building up. And there's a feeling for some time that we need to take the next step, that we need to um, overcome that hurdle and, and triumphantly step above things that have stopped us in the past and reached a new level. And on the other hand, we're getting these beacons, beacons from, 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 uh, from the outside environment that maybe reality is just not ripe yet to accept all our dreams and make them come true. That maybe, just maybe, it's not opening up and, and unfolding as marvelously and as easily as we would dream it to be. And that can make us a little bit unsure of ourselves and vulnerable and hurt our confidence. And we can move from overconfidence and a bit of a feeling of elation to a very sensitive feeling and a very passive feeling. Now let's talk astrologists a little. We have two squares. So one square is the square between Mars and Uranus, it's going to peak at the 17th of July and subside afterwards. And that is part of the forward movement that we're feeling. We need to step up to the challenge and move forward. And that's the good thing about this square. It actually creates that inertia. It creates that need to step into unknown territory and evolve. But this impatience is also its downfall because it overlooks critical details, it steps over other people and other emotions, it doesn't have the patience or the tolerance for people that are not willing to join the journey or speed up uh, uh, themselves, and we can lash out on people, we can become much more violent with our reactions. So we need to take both these aspects, the positive and the negative, into consideration and basically ride this wave, ride this energy and use, make good use of it in your life. But when working at home or uh, doing any physical exercise or work or going on the roads, be extra careful. And you know, people listening to my, um, to my message last week said, wow, it was a really harsh message. We should uh, get into bed and not step out all week. And I'm saying, no, 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 sail this life like you're the captain. I mean, climb those mountains and slide down those hills and do it with a smile on your face. And when we are talking about days or, or, or transits that are dangerous or a little bit violent or, or stormy with their character, I'm talking about them so I can prepare you better for these days like for instance on the 16th we have a day that is a bit violent we have a day that is a bit turbulent we have a day that could be a bit uh, too dramatic and and uh, argumentative has a very um aggressive attitude because the moon is in uh, aries and it squares the sun and mars and it squares on the other hand pluto creating this t-square and we're talking about the 16th so on that day, you could take an extra pack of tolerance and an extra pack of smiles and just dust off any aggression and any violence that comes your way and not let it touch you. And the chances are 
that on the 16th, if you do that, you're going to have a wonderful day, a positive day. Just like we know that statistically speaking, the most dangerous thing that we do in Western society is drive our cars or step into a car commute on the road statistically more people die on the roads than they do in bombings or suicide attacks or or wars all put together but because we know that this is a dangerous environment we buckle up and we uh, close our doors and we use our uh, uh, lights and we uh, use our horns if need needed and we we drive very safely and most of the time we get to where we need to go safely too and that's about the same thing we're talking about less positive aspects so we can prepare to them so that was one square the other uh, uh, conjunction that the sun conjuncts mars is also part of that forward movement and it makes us need to assert ourselves need to find what it is that is important to us in our life that is sacred that is something that we love to play and invest our energy in that is part of who we are and the light we want to emit onto the world and that would peak at around the 23rd of the 24th of july around the new moon but the bad aspects of it is that we are much more assertive and there's a fine line between assert assertivity and aggression and we're much uh, more hasteful and, and lustful and, and uh, carnal and violent and angry and basically all our male instincts are heightened so we're better entrepreneurs and we're better creators and we have this outward movement but it could be a little bit aggressive or it could be you know mars is not a very good strategist it's uh, brutal um brutal outburst of power but it doesn't have a lot of thought so we need to pay some extra attention to how it is we navigate our actions up to the 24th in order to best utilize this conjunction. The other square that I wanted to talk about is Venus and Neptune and it's speaking on the 17th and that's a time that we could be a little bit more naive and romantic and, and, and a lot more vulnerable within our relationships and love uh, connections with our lovers and of course with our uh, income in life as well and the way we bring in money and matter into our life so this is not the best time to make long-term decisions important decisions regarding relationships or income up to the 17th and it is a time to understand that we are more vulnerable and we can uh, lose our confidence more easily so just uh, play it down a little and uh, pamper yourself and protect yourself and you know like when we have a, a sensitive ear we put an earplug before we go into a crowded or loud place to protect our ear from from getting hurt and that's about what we need to do when if we know we're getting into a situation within our relationships within uh, our work environment regarding income and uh, let's say a raise in our salary we have to know that we're extra sensitive we can get hurt very easily and we need to protect ourselves and put ourselves in a protected environment as much as possible and not expose ourselves to things that we know will hurt us in our sensitivity um, and after that there's an opposition between Saturn and Venus so after this very naive time and a uh, very um, blurry time comes a time of realization a time to see things as they are not as they, they not as we want them to be not as we are afraid they might be but as they really are in our relationships at large and the way we draw in funds at large so yes our primary relationship with our lover is first but it's also business relationship it's also friendships that we have in our life and when saturn opposes it it says hey buddy you know you might like this person or you might enjoy 
being with him but this isn't really doing any good for you in your life right now this is not what you need in your life this is not feasible and thus it must dissipate when Saturn comes across it judges and it doesn't give any attention to our wishes if this is a relationship that benefits us that truly is authentic and positive then it grows stronger during this time but if it's not it crumbles away and that peaks on the 24th if I'm not mistaken and after that it would dissipate on the 20th however the moon would conjunct Venus in Gemini opposing Saturn Whenever the moon conjuncts Venus, this is a great time for satisfaction. It's a great time to, se to celebrate life and good company and good food and good drinks. And basically, the fact that we're breathing and life can become more joyful. All this time, when Venus is in Gemini, there's a lot, it has a lot to do with intellectual stimulation. We need to learn much more. We need to expose ourselves to much more ideas and information regarding relationships and love and satisfaction and income during this time that Venus is in, uh, is in Gemini. But Gemini's downfall is that it's not consistent enough, that it spreads out in too many directions and whenever something becomes boring for him, it moves away before actually being enough in one place to be able to eat the fruits of its labor. So that Saturn could actually be a good um, balancing uh, pendulum to that Venus moon and say, hey, if, if you're now engaged in making your life um, more blissful and full of contentment, and full of joy that's great but just make sure that those activities or that those people you are getting involved with are not some you know they're not running away from reality we're not running away from reality into a fantasy world and they don't have anything to do with our reality but this is something that we can interact within our reality that we can engage into our reality that we can pour into our reality and actually is feasible on the long run is beneficial on the long run this could work if we do it right and that's what we should really be doing on the 20th and on the 21st are also important days because mercury is on the north node this is a very strong time for mercury the planet of communication and 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 thoughts and uh, information and navigation through life these are great days for actually coming out with any creative endeavor, with any new project, making it known, publicizing it. It's great days to sign a deal. It's great days to make decisions on how to take your life forward and who it is you're going to be in the next, uh, in the next period in your life because it's in Leo. And other than that, on the 21st, Mars finally goes into Leo. On the 22nd, the Sun goes into Leo as well. Happy birthday, all you Leos. And I'm so happy that it does because it's going. Be, these two planets together going into Leo are going to make us much more cheerful. And the joie de vivre is going to be more intense. We're going to enjoy life and play with life and want to take a bigger part in life and live this life in a way that would contribute to the world. That's Leo contribute to the world something unique because I have lived in it what is my unique gift to the world this is a time that we are called to give birth to our unique gifts unique gifts that are of value to the greater group but are our authentic love the things that we hold sacred and cherish in our lives so, with this movement into Leo, we can feel the energy is lifting. And we can feel that we now have the bravery to actually make that leap forward. 
the only thing is we need to become extra modest and we need to um, draw away from self-importance because the only um, bad aspect about that is that we become, become too self-absorbed, too sure of ourselves, too vain, too proud and thus get rejected for giving out that energy. Not being accepted, our message gets rejected. But as long as we are modest, as long as we're doing it with an aim to serve, but it still is authentic and something that we love, give birth to the new you. And with that, I want to leave you and I want to thank you for listening. And of course, for private consultations, lessons, or courses, you're more than welcome to contact me. I'm Boaz Feiler, and I'm signing off. Have a beautiful week. Goodbye.